Welcome back, what's going on? In today's video, we're gonna talk about reflected cross-site scripting. In the last video, we saw how we used stored cross-site scripting, how to test if it exists, right? And we answered the questions. And lastly, we saw how we can steal a user's cookie by injecting a cross-site scripting payload stored in the database of the website. So any user who visits the page, their cookie will be automatically sent to the attacker. Okay. Now, how about what's the case with reflected cross-site scripting? So with reflected cross-site scripting, we have to answer two questions. As you can see, we have to craft a reflected XSS payload that will cause a pop-up saying hello, and we have to craft one that cause a pop-up with the machine IP address. We know how to do that, but what if we want to use reflected, what if the website is vulnerable to XSS, only the reflected type? So you cannot just craft XSS payload, and store it in the website because it is not vulnerable to stored XSS. In this case, we want to use the reflected cross-site scripting. We want to grab the user cookie using reflected cross-site scripting. That's what we will do in this video. So we grab the IP address and we navigate to the remote host target or the target remote host. So I guess I have forgotten my VPN and my proxy running i'm gonna disable the proxy from the last video Advanced. and i was right no proxy apply okay right so we go to the targets and that's it so here we're going to talk about reflected in the last video as i said we talked about stored so in reflected the options are only grabbing um, the IP address as you required, displaying phrases, and the most importantly, we want to grab the user cookie. Okay, so as required by the questions, we have first to test if the page is vulnerable to reflected cross site scripting. So we have to look for a search form. So this is a typical search form. You can find it on any website, any web page on the internet. All we have to do is to try some access payloads yourself manually. If you can't find anything, I recommend we use Burp Suite to go over and iterate through a list of payload, XSS payloads that will um, test if the site is actually vulnerable to XSS, given the fact that it is not using filters. This is another case. But let's come down, let's boil it down to basic testing. So the basic testing all the time is we test with a pop-up phrase like this one. So once we get the pop-up, it is vulnerable, right? So this is the answer. Let's get the answer first and display it here. Of course, these videos are more than just answering the questions. It's about illustrating the vulnerability and implementing a practical scenario. So here we get a first by the IP. So as you can see here, after I inserted the XSS payload, the URL has changed keyword equal script alert hello, right? Okay. So let's say you want to trick your friends, right? And you know that they are visiting a vulnerable website to XSS. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna say, for example, here, hi, monkey, something like that. Hi, monkey, right? Okay, so you take this URL, that's how reflected cross-site scripting, or reflective, sorry, works so we take the url right as is and we send it to the victim that's how we can get the victim's browser to display the hello monkey for example let's suppose that we are the victim right on this tab and when we navigate to the url someone has just sent us so we navigate to the url and once we navigate we see hi monkey <laughs> okay so the next question is displaying the location or the IP address. And as I said in the last video, we can do that with script alert window location host name. Once we click search, the IP will be revealed and thus the answer will be displayed. So let's answer the question. Put it here. Okay. So this is done, but let's first get back and see how we can implement a scenario where we need to grab the cookies, right, to our web server. Hmm. 
For example, in a practical scenario, what you're going to do, you're going to first establish a web server running. For example, sudo uh, python 3-m http web server. So I am now the attacker, and I know that a certain website has or is vulnerable to reflected cross-site scripting. What I want to do here, I want, let me first get the IP, we're getting that. This is the IP, okay. Let's get back here. Okay, so assuming that you have a target user who is admin on the web page, and you want to, <clears throat> let's say, crack their account, or you want to access the admin panel of the site. So you're gonna need their password, or you need their cookies. So in case you don't have access to resources required for in conducting a um, brute force attack, or in case your brute force attack has failed, you're gonna resort, you're gonna resort to stealing the cookies. How you steal the cookies? You know that this site is vulnerable to reflective HSS. So what we're gonna do here, you're gonna craft a URL like this one, but instead of popping up an alert, we're gonna make the browser sends us back the cookie. How are we going to do that? We need an access payload that displays or displays or reveals the cookie, right? So instead of that, or here, we're going to type this. So this is the access payload that will display the cookies, all of you notice, as I guess. So here, we're going to go back, grab our, our IP address. And here, 8,000. Okay, so once you click search, what will happen? As you can see, it, it has directed me to my web server, right? If I go back and check Python, I see a request has been made, right, from this page to my web server. As you can see, it contains the cookie. That's what we need, right? So once you receive the cookie, all you have to do is to use Burp Suite to access their account. So, okay, let me check, let me grab Jack Cookie. In the recent example, let me disable now or keep it. So this is my cookie, right? We want Jack Cookie, which who is the admin user on the system. So we're gonna get back here. All right, so, here, we saw in the last video that we stole Jack Cookie, right? Who's the admin on the website. Now, let's do this. So um, here, if we, or I need to log in as Jack, actually. Okay, um, let's get back. and see here, okay. So this is stored access, and this is the cookie of Jack. So basically, if we send Jack this URL, just a second. Okay, as you can see, if Jack clicked on the URL, right, their cookie will be here, will be sent to us. I think this is very clear. Um, now, how you send the URL? Of course, we're gonna use encoders, uh, sorry, URL shorteners. We send the URL shorteners via email to trick the user into click, clicking the URL, and once they click, as you can see, we'll receive their information. Now, what's your next step? The next step is to impersonate the user. And we explained in the last video, you can get back in the last video, how we launched Perp Suite and replaced our cookie with the cookie that we have stolen so that we had access to Jack account. So that is about reflected across site scripting. And if reflected, you're gonna use the URL and send it to the victim. An action is required from the victim. In stored, all you have to do is to log in and look for a vulnerable search form like this one and insert the payload. Once you insert the payload, any user who visits the page, their cookie will be sent back to you. I hope this is clear. And in the next video, we're gonna talk about
So now we cleared, stored, reflected. We're going to talk about DOM paste, and then we're going to move on using how to do port scanning and key logging with XSS. That was it, and see you in the next video.